We're in completely uncharted waters with a highly charged general election to be held in the midst of a global pandemic. I'm Veronica Rickert. This is Badger Talks. Today, we're talking with UW-Madison political science professor Kathy Kramer and the author of The Politics of Resentment about her work with student voting on campus, what happens after the election, and what she's heard listening to political talk radio. Kathy, thank you so much for being here. Always my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Kathy, you've been working hard to help coordinate student voting efforts here on campus at UW-Madison. Can you describe that effort for us? Sure, I'd be happy to. So I'm co-chair of what we call the Badger Votes Coalition. And what this is, is a group of people from across campus, students, staff, faculty, administrators, all working together to help coordinate our uh, student voter engagement efforts. And it started um, back in 2017 when Chancellor Blank asked me to help lead our campus's efforts in the Big Ten Voting Challenge. It's a competition among the Big Ten schools to see who can get the highest level of student voter engagement. And so it's, it's a group of people that um, has been working together for several years now uh, to try to maximize student voter engagement. And I've heard that the students have been especially passionate. Is that true? Oh, absolutely. They are the core of what we're doing. The students, um, there, there's a, um, several dozen interns who are coordinated through the Mortgage Center for Public Service. And they've been creative and energetic, and really, it's their efforts um, that drive that drive uh, the coalition. They're doing everything from creating podcasts to figuring out how to contact other students through Instagram and other social media. Um, they are really uh, just been doing a fabulous job in very difficult circumstances. And this is happening now. Early voting starts on campus at UW Madison. Are you ready? Oh, definitely. So, right, early voting is the 20th through the 30th of October, 11, to, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., and it will be taking place in tents outside. So, we're bundling up, <laughs> getting ready. Um, we're also getting ready to provide student voter IDs for those who need them right there at the early voting locations. And so, there's a lot of communication going on, spreading the word, helping students know what they need in order to vote. And so, as as we're talking about here, there is a lot of attention focused on what happens before the election leading up to the election, but you also care a lot about what happens after the election. Why is that? Well, we definitely do. I mean, th there's uh, quite a, there's widespread concern this time that the election is not going to be decided on election day. There's a possibility because of the high level of absentee voting that not all the ballots will be counted on election day. And there's so much interest in this in this election from a wide variety of people that everyone wants to know the outcome on the third. Roughly half of the country is going to be disappointed in the outcome, given the way that this country is so closely divided right now politically. And so we're concerned that um, there will be a lot of very intensely held and hurt feelings, to put it mildly, around election time. And we're trying to think of ways that we can um, be civil with one another and be good to one another on campus and, and beyond campus after the election. So it's really hard to separate out, and I guess you really can't separate out the pandemic from the election. They're really intertwined. And you've been doing some research alongside all this voting work about uh, exactly how people feel and attitudes, and in particular, how masks got politicized. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've heard listening to political talk radio? Sure. Well, I've just been so interested in the way that partisanship is intertwined with how people deal with the pandemic on a public health level. And it's been interesting to me that, to listen to the conversation about masks evolve over time. Um, Probably the most the most intriguing thing for me has been listening to stations from more rural locations around the United States, including uh, here, right here in Wisconsin and nearby Minnesota, and listening to the way when when masks when it when it was first kind of communicated to the public at large that masks were necessary for preventing the spread of the disease, how many people were on board with that and um, 
kind of communicating that to their audiences, including more conservative, more Republican leaning hosts of shows. But that changed over time as it became pretty clear that there was a, a partisan division in how people were responding to the mask mandates. Um, and I think that that has something to do with the way our, the state of Wisconsin has responded to the people in the state of Wisconsin where you see, you know, um, more of an outbreak currently um, in more Republican leaning areas. And I think it's partly because people have paid attention to leaders they respect who um, over time have, have not been emphasizing that masks are as necessary. Kathy, thank you so much for talking today. Appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for doing this and thank you for inviting me. If you have questions for us or topic suggestions or want to comment on this Badger Talks, send us an email at covid19update at uc.wisc.edu. And for more information, you can go to covid19.impact.wisc.edu. This is Badger Talks.